Hello everyone, welcome to Fiction Silicon Valley's first ever FSV Spotlight. And I used to have, do a lot of these artist spotlights where I'd have authors and actors and voiceover artists and cartoonists and comic writers and comic drawers, I guess. And over on a gaming channel that I did with my son, but now that I have launched Fiction Silicon Valley... Uh, the new literary journal for Silicon Valley for the global reader community. It's not just for only for Silicon Valleyites, for readers or authors and writers and poets. It's for everybody. It's an all-inclusive literary journal, not an exclusive one. So I decided to move over my spotlights from the gaming channel that I have with my son because that was the channel I was using for my videos. And now I have one here for fiction Silicon Valley specifically. And... Great little fun fact here. The very first author I had for ODNT Spotlight, my old dog new trick spotlight for my gaming channel, her name was Mayor Wilson, and she came to us with a book that she had. Well, funny enough, the very first person I have coming here today is again Mayor Wilson, and she's bringing to us a memoir of her and Philip K. Dick. So she met, and we'll talk to her about how that happened. Philip K. Dick, we may know him from the movies that really became from his work. Blade Runner, I believe Total Recall, which is my favorite movie of all time. Trapped on a desert island with only one movie for the rest of my life. Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's my movie. So let's go ahead and let's switch on over and let's meet Mayor again. Welcome back, Mayor, to FSV Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you. It's so much fun to be here. And that's so funny. The first guest on, on both of those shows. That's, that's, that's amusing. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. But it's not like you're the only person I've interviewed. I've interviewed over a hundred authors, but it just happened to fall right in line that when I started Fiction Silicon Valley, you contacted me and said, Hey, I want to do another ODNT spotlight. And I'm like, okay, great. And then as soon as I'm setting up, I'm like, this needs to move over to my new channel for, for <laughs> authors and artists. Uh, that's so, so welcome, wonderful. Welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, and it's funny because my book is nonfiction. So I like know. It. So here we go. We've got, you know, FSV Fiction Silicon Valley's first spotlight is a nonfiction book. But again, I mentioned we're all inclusive. We're not exclusive. That's great. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> and so this is a nonfiction. Go ahead and tell us what this book is about. Well, it's literally about the friendship that I had with Philip K. Dick the last 10 years of his life. So I met him in 1972 and we remained friends literally up until his death in 1982. So, uh, you know, there've been so many stories out there told about him and how crazy he was and all the drugs and everything like that. And that's not who I knew or who the circle of friends that I hung out with, like Tim Powers and Jim Blaylock, um, who your your listeners and watchers probably know, uh, Tim Powers, a three-time World Fantasy Award-winning author, Jim Blaylock, World Fantasy Award-winning author. Uh -huh. um, back before they were, war you know, award-winning authors, uh, Tim was a college student at the same college I went to, and I met him literally a week after I met Phil. Uh, the first time we all went out together, we went to see A Clockwork Orange. But I'm not going to get too much into stuff because I don't give away the whole book. Right. It's all in the book. Get the, it's, book. It's all in the book. And I've got all the links down below so that right now it's on pre-order. Correct. For the Kindle and also at Smashwords. And so I've got the links for that down below. Uh, so if you're watching this embedded in another website somewhere, just click the little watch on YouTube button down in the bottom corner over there, and then you can see the description. You can pre-order the book now. When when does this book come out? It actually releases on August 9th. All and right. at that time, then the paperback will come available as well. Yeah, so the paperback will come out at the same time. But right. you can get it on ebook now, and it will auto-deliver right. right straight to your Kindle on August 9th. Exactly. Or I think it become available on your Smashwords account on August 9th. Yeah, I think it goes what at midnight on the 9th. Something yeah, like so that. if you're in like Pacific on the West Coast, you'll probably get it at like 9 p.m. the day before. Yeah. Something like that. I think that there's this weird midnight somewhere. 
yeah, it's it's midnight someplace on the planet. Um, you know, <laughs> it's magic, you know, <laughs> it just magically appears. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, so I'm gl- so glad that you you contacted me to come back on the show, even though this is our first show, <laughs> right? And everything, but and it's great that you you wrote this. So you mostly have done fiction stories. That's what, what I've usually had you on, right? For doing fiction, what prompted you to do a nonfiction memoir type? Because this is really about you and your relationship that you had with Phil. And, right. And you met him because why? Uh, he came over and uh, we lived across the hall from each other. He moved into an apartment across the hall and came over and knocked on the door and asked um, me and my roommate, my best friend out or to come over for coffee that night. And we were in the middle of something. And they said, well, you want to go, you want to go to a movie with us? And we're like, okay, <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> and um we did. We were friends ever since. So he just moves in across the hall. Yeah, he moved in with a, a man by the name of Joel Stein, and uh, was his roommate. And you know, this was in Fullerton. This is in the area where it was mostly college students that lived there. And Joel was also a college student. Um, I think he was majoring in history over at Cal State Fullerton. So. This was this was all kind of centered around Cal State Fullerton. Wow! Yeah, most of us when we bump into somebody big, it's because we've been stalking them for months. We've figured out their schedule. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't big back then. I mean, he he was, but he wasn't. Uh, this is back in the '70s, and you didn't have the superstardom for authors quite as much as you did, like say for um, TV and film. Um, I had just done a play an original play for Ray Bradbury, Cal State Fullerton uh, had Ray as um, a guest artist at Cal State Fullerton. Oh. And and um, we were doing the original version of Dandelion Wine, which was a musical version of Dandelion Wine. And so we had Ray Bradbury in and out of our rehearsals all the time. So <laughs> that was a name I knew, but I'd never heard of Philip K. Dick. I mean, I didn't know who he was. He's right, just he was running in the circles of science fiction readers. Right. And and they knew who he was. But, you know, to me, I didn't read science fiction back then. I didn't read fantasy. Um, I read mysteries and horror and stuff like that. So, and mainstream. So it was, it was really interesting and historical. It was really interesting to, to meet. I mean, he said he's a writer and I said, okay, you know, that's <laughs> great. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was he wasn't he didn't start getting big um until literally the last year of his life that's when the mainstream started becoming aware of him with with you know with blade runner coming out right right that's when he started making money but he was dirt poor you know when he lived in fullerton initially they he just didn't have a lot of money it's hard to be a science fiction writer <laughs> yeah yeah and you know Back then, they called him the black humorist of science fiction. That is, he had so much humor. And that's some, when I just did um, the Philip K. Dick conference back in April of this year. And that's one of the things that I said, I really wish they would s- realize a little bit more and, and recognize and go back to that, that he had a lot of humor in his books that I think people have missed. Well, I think the translation to movies, they might have just skipped that part. Possibly. You know, as they translate the stories, go, well, he's, you know, dark, gritty sci-fi. So that's what we're going to focus on. And they just kick out all the, the funny mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, but you got to understand that most of his stuff that Hollywood has done so far, it's don't get me wrong, it's wonderful. I love it. But it has so little to do with his actual work. Uh, you mentioned Total Recall, which is um, my favorite short story of his uh, I can remember it for you wholesale we can remember it for you wholesale and they've gotten the casting wrong both times they've done this film (laughs) Uh because the character in the book is really kind of a milk toast type character you know um he's the last person you would think of being a spy certainly not the uh, you know Mr. He-Man Arnold Schwarzenegger Schwarzenegger, right or, or, or pretty boy Colin Farrell. I mean, this is not, this story is about the last person in the world you would expect 
not a guy that it's plausible. And both times they've done the casting on this, they've gone with these guys. Oh yeah, I could buy him as a spy. I could totally see him, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, and it shouldn't be. So they've gotten the casting wrong, and I think they've missed the whole point of the story itself in the movie. Now, having said that, do I love the movies? Yes, I love the movies. They're great. They're wonderful. They're just not what I would have done. They're not the choices I would have made if I were adapting his story over. Right. So they took um, something that's actually got a lot of depth to it for a short story. It's got a lot of depth and complexity to it. And they turned it into an action movie. Yeah, both like, times. <laughs> both times. And to me, that misses. So as far as I'm concerned, those are two really great movies, but they still have not made a movie of We Can Remember It For You Wholesale yet, in my opinion. <laughs> so we're still waiting for a good movie adaptation of that short story. Well, we're, and let's not say good. Let's say an accurate. Yes, yes. Because we've had two good movies. I loved yes. them both. You know, yes. my preference is for the Arnold Schwarzenegger one because we don't know at the end, is he still, li you know, lying in the suit, in the chair at the end of the movie, yeah. completely out of it? I think he is. Yeah. And, and, and if you go, if you go back and you read the short story, that's completely different. Yeah. I read the short story and I went, well, this wasn't the movie I saw. No. <laughs> so I'm like, they took the idea and concept yeah. And then made a whole new story based on it. Exactly. You know, so and they're that's really inspired by. But Hollywood does that a lot. <laughs> yes. I mean, you have to go into a movie based on a book or on a story knowing it's not going to be the same as your book or story. You right. know, especially if you're dealing like with the Harry Potter series. So many people were, were talking about, you know, oh, this isn't how it was in the book. Yeah, they took. You have to take shortcuts in film. You've got two, two and a half hours to do what you're doing in a, you know, a 300 page book. It's just you're. It's just not going to translate. Right. So and you this, have to make choices. Right, and all the <laughs> internal stuff you can't yeah. do. No. You know that we can easily do on the page, but it doesn't translate unless you do a voiceover, and that's a wholly different kind of genre. Exactly. So it's it's a wonderful. I, I love the film versions of Phil's work, but I don't, I take them with a grain of salt. I don't go, oh, oh this is such a faithful adaptation because they're really not. Right. They're you inspired know. by. Yeah. But are they fun? Are they good? Do I like them? Do I enjoy them? Absolutely. I enjoyed all of them. I did too. They're, they're, they're great. And Blade Runner, you know, with the sequel of Blade Runner, uh, supposedly coming out in 2017, some, you know, really exciting stuff going on with Phil's work. Um, I caught the first, I caught the first half of the first season of Man in High Castle so far, because I'm, I'm watching that on Amazon Prime. Right. And I'm loving that. Um, gosh, you know, that one, I have to say, it's been so long since I read the book that I'm like, was this in the book? I'd have to go back and read the book again. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to read the book and go, well, they didn't follow the book. Yeah. No, I don't get too bent when something doesn't follow the book because I I know what they I know the challenges they're facing. Exactly. So, the different me the different storytelling mediums mediums yeah. require different methodology. And and you just you have to go into it with that idea. And if they get anything close, say, yay! <laughs> and, <laughs> and be happy with that. So so seeing the film film adaptations is is always fun for me but i think the whole thing with total recall and we can remember for you wholesale at least for me is because it's my favorite story that he wrote um i i i keep hoping for one a little closer ah yes and so you know you're you're saying that uh the we can remember for wholesale is your favorite story of his that he wrote when you met him you said you weren't really reading any science fiction. No, I didn't. I didn't read science fiction at all. But he got you he into got science me, fiction. Yes, he got me into science fiction. And that's in the book, too. So I'm not going to give that story away. <laughs> we won't get the details. <laughs> read the book. Yeah, read the book when it comes out. Um, I, I had a really interesting question that somebody asked me on, on my website this morning that, you know, well, it, you're saying that this guy, and I'm paraphrasing, 
um, you're saying that this guy's all, all warm and fuzzy. Then why are all these stories out there about how nuts he was and this big drug addict and all that stuff? And I'm like, well, you know, that's uh, my answer was that's the whole point of me writing this book. Um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to Tim Powers and I said, you know, Tim, we should co-write um, our own book about film. And he's like, no, you should write your own book about film. <laughs> um, and, and I had several other people who were big, big PKD fans who said, oh, my gosh, you knew Philip K. Dick. You need to write you need to write your stories down. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. And then and then I just had enough people about the same time say, please write this stuff down. Please do something. So a couple of years ago, I started writing the book. And I'd get up to the last year and I'd stop because the last year was really hard to write. I was with Phil right. a lot the last year, especially the last six months. We were getting ready to go to Europe for five weeks. Then we were, after we came from Europe, we were going to hit the, the premiere for Blade Runner in New York City. So, I mean, there was just a lot going on that last year. So I'd get up to that last year and then I'd stop and I'd put it away and I'd go do something else. <laughs> and um, then I'd come back to it and I'd start at the beginning and I'd tweak everything I'd written and I'd get to the end and I'd stop again for, at that last year. And then um, this year I said, okay, you're not getting any younger here, Chickadee. You need to like get get off the stick and get this done. <laughs> and... and um, and I had some people really nagging me too, which probably didn't hurt or help or something. <laughs> and um, so I, I came up with a, a, a way of putting the book together that actually allowed me to get through that last year. And I wrote that whole last year. I wrote the first version of that. It was about 16,000 words and I wrote it in like three or four days. Wow. And I sat down and just wrote it all out. Just and then I went done. back and filled it in and, and got, but I got that rough, got past that hurdle of having to write about that last year and write about the stroke and write about his death. And Which all was the that. tough, tough part of the story. Yeah, that, that was the hard one. So once I got the bare bones of that down, then I went back and I, I did the you know, filled it in and it was just kind of, okay, got that part done. <laughs> no, no, yeah. okay. Once you get past the mental hurdle of putting that down and committing that to actual print on paper, then you yeah. can look at it more analytically with an editor's eye and go, okay, well, we need this. This should be a little juicier, this a little bit. And now you could really step back from it. Well, I got the details in and, and trying to be careful to, because I'm sitting here like, burning strawberry incense and listening to 1970s music and everything, trying to go back because I'm going back 30, 40 years. Right. Going back to 1982. years ago. So, but, but the thing is, is some of these memories were so strong that I have remembered them. And I've told these stories throughout the years. So to friends and things like that. So I was able, it's not like I, I had to just go back and remember something I haven't thought about. Right. It's, you've, it's, you've been it's, thinking about it and everyone told you, you got to write this down. Yeah. This is good stuff. Yeah. So, so I wanted to tell, you know, it's called the other side of Philip K. Dick for a reason because everybody thinks, and, and Paul Salmon says this beautifully in his back cover blurb, you know, that everybody has this, this vision of Phil as this drug crazed mystic and, you know, that wasn't Phil. That wasn't Phil at all. Not the, but the last 10 years I knew him. Did he do drugs in the sixties? Yeah. He says he did, you know, um, but was he popping pills? I think I read someplace on some website that he was taking hundreds of pills a day or something like that. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. Yeah, I, I was with him every day. No, he wasn't. <laughs> you know, this, this is not true. And, um, obviously with Tim Powers doing the foreword and Jim Blaylock, um, he has a note in the book as well as, um, the back cover quote, having them say, okay, now this is the man we knew. Right. This guy we recognize. Yes. So I got that Phil. validation from from other people who knew him. And the question was, well, why do all these other people, the question this morning on my website was, why do all these other people um, 
how come so many other people have this other vision? Well, you have all these people who've got second and third head accounts. All it takes is, oh, my friend knew him and he did a lot of drugs in the 60s. Well, yeah, but what does that have to do with the last 10 years? I'm not talking about the 60s. Other people have talked about the 60s. I wasn't there. I can't comment. And you can't always go by what Phil said either, because Phil told stories. <laughs> he was a he was a fictional character by nature. He he told stories. So <laughs> uh, so I I wanted to to give the view of the person that I knew. Right. And was he eccentric? Absolutely. He was a science oh. fiction writer in a very <laughs> tough time of being a science fiction writer. Yeah, he was he was very much so. But and I have a theory of why my vision and Tim's vision and Jim's vision and some of the other people who knew him well, how, why our visions are different. I, that's in the book too. Excellent. So read the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but let's face it, you know, and it's like, I told this guy this morning, some people may have their own agendas as to why they're going to tell stories. What's going to sell more uh, a guy that's not a big drug crazed crazy person or a fairly normal-ish person, which are you going to want to read about? It's lots more fun to read the drama, whether it's true or not. Right. The sensationalized exactly. version of a person. So I wanted to give, I wanted to give the, the truth of the man that I knew that Tim Powers knew that, that those of us who literally did hang out with him um, and knew him for all those years, New, as opposed to others who may have had their own agendas and their own reasons for how they painted him. Right. And or may have just heard from somebody. Heard from somebody or knew him back in the 60s when he was less stable. Right. When he was that person or something like that person. I don't think he was ever. You knew exactly him for a decade. That's an awful long time to know somebody. You're going to get to know somebody very well if you know him for a decade. Yeah. Yeah. And I did. And I knew him for 10 years. And I mean, I went through um, wife number five and all of that and that divorce. And so, I mean, I was, I was there through the whole thing um, as was Tim Powers, as was Jim Blaylock and, and that circle of friends that, um, that interacted with Phil, you know, regularly, um, especially those, those last couple of years and especially the last year when things started really picking up for him with um, Blade Runner and that being, you know, going into a film. And, and I've got uh, all about that, his, his opinions that got shared with me numerous occasions <laughs> <laughs> about Blade Runner and everything, because, you know, he wasn't very nice about Blade Runner in the beginning. He was not happy with Ridley Scott. With how the chat, what changes were being made and... Oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't that. It was just it, Ridley Scott. It, he was just rude about it. And I told him he was rude. This is in the book, too. But I told Phil, <laughs> I said, you can't, you, you, what did you do? And he, he really um, said some things <laughs> in an interview with Paul Salmon, as a matter of fact. Paul Salmon did an interview with Phil for TV Guide Select. That I think went out in, uh, I think it was in the February edition, 1981. And <laughs> oh. He really was not nice to Ridley Scott <laughs> and uh, said some things that uh, I'm just like, oh, I can't believe you did that. So um, after that, uh, I was trying to keep him kind of like, do your PR, Phil. You got to do your PR. You can't, you can't be, you can't be sitting here bad mouthing the guy who's going to make your movie you've got to like come to terms with this <laughs> well, read the script you know and i'm like okay, i'll read the script i loved the script he hated the script <laughs> so but he did come around he never got to see the whole movie oh. which this is, this is common knowledge uh he never got to see the whole movie he only got to see the special effects and I was with him when he saw those special effects. I was with him when we did the kiss and make what I call the kiss and makeup meeting for him and Ridley Scott. Oh, good. Where he and then after he saw those special effects, he was just 180 degree turn. He's like, that's that's my story. Yeah, <laughs> that's my vision. Right. That's how that, I saw it. That's what how you got into my head. That's exactly what he said. And I don't think he ever knew that Ridley Scott like read a chapter of the book. 
<laughs> just a little bit. He didn't read much of it. So, um, yeah, I don't think Phil ever knew that part. <laughs> So, so this book comes out August 9th, and Correct. it's called The Other Side of Philip K. Dick. And this is your recollection of your decade that you knew Phil when he moved in across the hall from you and knocked on your door and said, how about some coffee? I'm bored. That's pretty much what they did. I need yeah. friends. <laughs> Kind of, kind of, sort of. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun times. And it was it was interesting. The first part of the book, going back and, and recalling all of those. And of course, I talked to people. Mary Lou Malone, um, who's now Mary Lou Staler, was with me the night I met Phil. Um, I've had her to go back to. I've had Tim and his wife, Tim Powers and his wife, Jim Blaylock and his wife. I've had these other sources, uh, you know, of when I say, OK, remember this, da, 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 da. And going to them and saying, do you remember this? And how do you remember this, this particular thing? And, um, and Tim basically says in his foreword, which is what Jim says in the back cover quote, this was the Phil Dick I knew. And Tim is like, yeah, you know, except for a couple of little things, this is, this is how I remember these things too. So that was very nice validation that, you weren't My misremembering memory. stuff and sugarcoating your history with him. Oh yeah. No, I don't sugarcoat it. I don't sugarcoat it. Um, I just didn't know the crazy person. Right. That, that was before. Maybe. Or at, at all. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I just, but I have a theory. I have a theory that I put out in the book as to why I, I think Phil had so many different faces. And I have that theory in the book. I, I, I think it's plausible. Do I think it's definite? No, it's a theory. You know, right. we're never going to know. You know, the only person who can answer that is Phil and he's long gone. You know, he's been gone for 34 years. So right. there's no way to say, okay, Phil, is this what you were doing? Um, but certainly those of us who knew him really well as, you know, his friends, his, his, his inner circle of friends have, have a very different take on um the real person now i have not seen the but they've done you know biopics about him too i think bill pullman was in one i've never seen any of the pictures i've never seen them you so, probably wouldn't recognize um who they were portraying I, I, yeah i didn't i didn't want to see them right um, it took me years to be able to read any of his books again by years i mean like three decades um i couldn't i couldn't read them i'd start to read them and i'd have to put it down it was just like I could hear his voice in my head and I put it down. And then when I started doing my research for the book and started writing and I discovered some of these um, old interviews from radio and where they'd recorded him and getting to hear his voice again was just it was it was hard. I can imagine. You know, it that, was like, oh, my God. It's like the years suddenly fade away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet, and you have to go back and get in that mindset and, and try to be as faithful and truthful as you can and not, not make up something simply because it'll, it'll sound better some way, you know, <laughs> right. or sound more dramatic. I think it was dramatic enough just as it was. It may not be for some people. They might prefer the, the crazy drug guy, but um, I didn't know him and I don't like that, that version. I mean, I don't, I, that's not who I knew. Right. That doesn't that doesn't mesh with what, you know, mm -mm, mm -mm. and and or Tim Powers, too. And, they, you know, they've asked this and and I was at the at the conference. Tim and Jim were saying they did um, a, a panel and they said the same thing. This wasn't the guy. This this just wasn't the guy. So um, I, I think in terms of showing a different side of his personality and showing a different version of the guy we knew i i at least tim and jim and other people have said that this is important adding this to the 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 stories that are out there about phil that that getting this particular version out there is important it's so, critical to to get the complete phil out there i think so because think everything so. has been cited on one focused on one small aspect depending upon how sensationalized it's been made or how true it is. 
everyone's glommed onto that. And fortunately, you're around to Still. give us the other side. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah, that was the other thing. It's like, okay, you're not getting any younger. You better do this. You're going to do this. So. <laughs> Before we have to remember more about you remembering Bill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I did re I actually did research making sure that, you know, um, I talked to people who would know something that I might not remember some little detail or something that I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm remembering this. Is this how you remember this? And them saying yes or yay or nay. And this is what I think. And then um, reminding me too of, of things that I'd completely forgotten about. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd forgotten about that. And then I'd remember them and they said it. Like, oh, I, oh yes, I know that now. And then I could sit down and remember exactly what happened. So it, so you, it was um, it was an interesting process writing this and then trying to be honest about who I was at the time, too. Because I'm not the same person I was when I was 19. Right. Yeah, we all shift and change. But it's good that you did your due diligence and still had contact with a lot of the people from then so that you could say, am I remembering this right? Yeah. Well, we have stayed in touch over the years, and and I think that's a testament to how close we were back in those days. Right. That 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 we can still, you know, that I can pick up, you know, I got it can pick up the phone, or I can email Tim, or I can call Mary Lou, and and say, hey, you know, da 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 da. And they'll take your call. They'll answer your email. Yeah, they'll actually answer it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the important thing. <laughs> yeah, talk to me, <laughs> and then of course Tim and Tim and Jim both being so gracious by um, actually contributing to the book itself, and and that was um, again um, major validation. Yeah, excellent. And so. uh, Phil made you also interested in writing science no. fiction. No, no, just reading it. Just reading it. Yeah, I didn't start writing. This is so funny, Steve. I never, I never saw myself as writing anything. If you told me 40 years ago, you're going to write someday, I would have laughed in your face. Uh -huh. I would have just had a really good laugh because I was in awe of writers. I thought writers were awesome. Um, I oh, wrote, magic. yeah, I wrote stuff like backstories for my characters, but I was theater. I was an actor. I didn't write. I, I said words other people wrote. And never, eat, but yeah, did I write stuff? Sure, I'm writing, like I said, backstories for my characters and uh, brochures and things like that at work and whatever I needed to do. But um, actual writing, I didn't do that until in 2000, I wrote a play. A re and I think I told you this before, I wrote a really bad play. Right. Really bad musical play. <laughs> and then five years later in 2005, I turned it into... I dumped the music and rewrote it as a screenplay. And that's actually pretty good. Um, that actually fixed all the things that were horribly wrong with the stage version. I was able to go in and, and fix. And th the screenplay is actually decent. I go back and read it every now and then and go, oh, you know, this wasn't oh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't so bad. Um, the first version, no, horrible, awful, terrible. Um, but yeah, this, the screenplay. And then in 2010, this, this woman I knew said, you know, I'm writing a book. I'm like, I should write a book. <laughs> I had an idea about six months ago for a story and I wrote it down for some unknown reason. And so I went and digging and I found out my little thing and here's my big idea. She senses things. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. That was it. <laughs> okay. That was my big idea. All right. So I sat down and went, hmm, okay, now what can I do with that? And I just kind of put it in the back of my mind. And not long after that, um, and I think I told you this story before, but I'll tell it again just in case. Since it's a new show. New show, uh, I, new crowd, I, new new listeners. <laughs> I played World of Warcraft. And um, you know how there are all of these Torrens. Everybody and their brother has to have their character named Moo something or other because Torrens are cows, right? Right. Cow people. And um, I, there was this husband and wife and their names were Moo this and Moo that. And I'm like, uh, long names. And I said, you know what? I can't deal with this anymore. 
um, I'm going to give you nicknames and your nickname is Luffy and your nickname is Thulu. And just before I hit send, something stopped me and I went Thulu and Luffy and I erased it. And it's like, I knew who they were and that was my couple. And that's the couple that um, Modern Magics, the entire Modern Magic series is, is built around Thulu and Luffy. Nice. And, and so it, but it all came from that name. And as soon as I saw those names, I went, oh, those aren't their nicknames. Those are my character's names. Oh, no. So I've never sent them the nicknames. I said, no, never mind. You're not getting these nicknames. These are mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So got into the, the fiction. So I had never thought of writing, you know, until For almost 20 years after. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and it wasn't very good. So I didn't do anything with it. So I really don't consider that I started writing, even though I did the, the horrible play in 2000 and the better screenplay in 2005. I don't consider that I actually started writing until I started writing novels, which is in 2010. All right. So and 30 then, years later. Yeah. Then I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I can have a, a story mean something. Okay. We'll try it. You know, we'll see how it goes. But I like telling the story, so um, it really doesn't matter whether anybody else likes them or not. I wish they would like them, but I'm not like gonna, I'm still gonna write because I enjoy telling the stories. And I have a science fiction book that as soon as I'm done with all of this stuff on the memoir, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get that out there. Excellent. Okay. Will that be your first true science fiction story yes yes it's it's um it's going to be set about 250 years in the future Ooh, nice and um it's called the truth sayer and that's all i think i want to say about okay it. and would phil be proud of it yeah i think he would because you know most of my stuff is kind of what we call cozy dark We've, we've coined that phrase on my stuff because right. I kill off lots of people, but I do it with so much love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the sugar and spice, dead. <laughs> I do it so nicely. Um, <laughs> and this is going to be dark probably without the cozy because what's in my head so far is, um, is not going to be as... Um, it's going to be a little little grittier, I think, than what I've done in the past. At least that's how it is in my head right now. I've got about, I want to say, 12,000 words into it. And I've just had an idea recently that I'm like, I don't want to start it there. I'm, I want a scene before that. So I've been playing around. With we'll have some... to have you back on the FSV Spotlight when that one comes out. <laughs> you say this to me every time. And I, I know. Go, and then I'm like, Steve, can I come back on your show again? I have a new book. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you, great. you are so gracious and you let me do it every time. Of you? course. This is Amazing. great. I, my, my favorite thing is helping out all my fellow authors and artists and everything. I know you're so wonderful. It's, it's such a pleasure to, to be able to, to have this, this um, outlet to be able to come to and to chat with somebody, you know, and at, at this point in time, with all the times I've been on your show, um, it, it, it's really, it's kind of like coming home a little bit. It's like, oh, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm comfortable there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had you so many times. It's so great. And all great stuff and everything. So before we wrap this up, is there anything else you would like the people who are watching this to know uh, for the book, uh, The Other Side of Philip K. Dick, coming out August 9th? It's available on pre-order right now for Amazon Kindle and on Smashwords. I have the links down below. It's also Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo. Are they for pre-order there as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's also, so you can look for it. Uh, Philip, the other side of Philip K. Dick by Mayor Wilson. I've got her name right up over there. You can also go to her website, mayorwilson.com. And I'm sure she'll have all her information about this new book. It is. It's, Therefore, it's you're probably the front and center right for now. now. <laughs> <laughs> for now, it's the top post. Yeah. Um, it, sh it should hopefully um, give people something to think about and to read about and uh, get to know somebody who gave us so many brilliant, brilliant books that, you know, people are still like, 
uh, today people are still debating on what does ubic mean, the ending of ubic. Well, I have no idea. I never understood the ending of ubic. But, <laughs> you know, um, everybody's got theories except me. I'm just kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah that, that was the end, all right. Uh, <laughs> it stopped right there. Yeah. And there are no more words. That must be the uh, end. Well, but that was the first book I ever read of Phil's. Oh, the confusing one. Yeah, he gave. He goes, you can't have this copy. You have to give it back to me because this is the only copy I have. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he said, read this book. So I read the book. I'm like, well, this is really good. He's re- he really is a writer. He really is good. <laughs> so, you know, he wasn't just making up stories. Um, which Because, you know, if you're in the arts, and you probably know this too, somebody finds out you're a writer and they go, oh, my my cousin's sister's nephew's dog wrote a book you know it's right. like everybody and their brother has something to do with the industry that you're in and we we hear this as artists all our lives that um people are trying to connect with you so they're trying to give you um a mutual thing to say hey i've got a connection to what you're doing right i bump uh, into van Gogh and oh i finger painted in kindergarten <laughs> exactly exactly we all want to want to connect with you you know uh, with each other and that's how we do that um so you tend to, when somebody says, oh, yeah, I'm a writer, you tend to kind of like take it with a grain of salt. But Phil really was a writer, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Everybody but you. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> I was clueless back then. Um, but, yeah. Um, I do want to add that I want to I want to share with your, your, th- your, um, your listeners, your watchers, um, your viewers, the very first line in chapter one, and I'll let I'll let you go with this one. Go for it. Is is this? It happened back when I was still immortal, and I'll leave you with that. That is such a good opening line. Thank you so much, Mayor Wilson, for coming back on my brand new show. <laughs> thank you. He's back on your brand new show. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. This is so much fun. I love being on your show. Oh, excellent, excellent. So don't go away just yet. I'm going to go ahead and close down this interview and everything, and I'll be right back. We'll chat for a few more minutes. But thank you very much for coming on again. Thanks, For the first time. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) So once again, I'm Steve DeWinter, the editor-in-chief for Fiction Silicon Valley, and this is the very first episode of our new series where we'll talk to authors and other artists and poets and everything. Um, Hopefully I'll get a lot of the people that I publish in the literary journal for Fiction Silicon Valley. But right now we have the very first issue is a nonfiction book, a memoir, The Other Side of Philip K. Dick by Mayor Wilson. And we just got done talking to her and very interesting. I highly, highly suggest I've read a little bit of it. And I didn't have much of a chance to read the whole thing. She sent me the book, but uh, I read a little bit of it. And I mean, with an opening line like, this all happened back when I was immortal, is such a great, powerful opening line. And it fits in with the whole concept of Philip K. Dick being a science fiction author and really going into the speculative fiction and just talking about a world outside of our own. And so that's really good. So definitely check it out. I have the links for Amazon and Smashwords for the Kindle uh, editions down below and you can go ahead and check out Mara Wilson's website at marawilson.com <coughs> and she'll have links for other things if you want to get it on Barnes & Noble for your Nook or your Kobo or also for iBooks and Google Play possibly you know she'll have all the links there at her website so once again thank you very much Steve DeWinter editor-in-chief for Fiction Silicon Valley thanks for watching have a great day bye <laughs>